from a captured German newsreel received through official War Department sources show how the German nation prepared for their present powerful counteroffensive on the Western Front. All places of amusement were closed. Everything was subordinated to the grim bid for a negotiated peace. Nazi women were drafted for war jobs as the German general staff took over from Hitler the direction of the counterthrust against the Allied threat to the Rhineland. With the steady pounding of the German oil reserves and synthetic oil plants by the Allied Air Forces and the loss of Romanian oil fields, gas is scarce. In munition centers, streetcars and trucks are loaded with supplies for the Nazi war machine. And heading toward the threatened West Wall, the trolleys drag the powerless trucks. Up at the front, the well-husbanded gasoline sets Nazi tanks rolling toward France. Again, the Wehrmacht is on the prowl. V weapons, like the famous robot bomb, blast allied positions. Nazi columns, like probing fingers, thrust at the Allied lines, feeling for a break in our defense. Fifteen German divisions, upward of 200,000 men and 600 tanks, were thrown into the desperate gamble to delay the Allied advance. Nazi spearheads rolling into Belgium were strafed by Yank planes. Remember, these are still German pictures. Nazi equipment takes a pounding from American bombardiers. And shifting over to the American lines, Yank artillery opens up on the advancing Germans. Signal Corps pictures show one of our wounded tank commanders being attended by medics during the bitter struggle. And make no mistake, the German breakthrough marked one of the bitterest battles the world has ever seen. Many prisoners were taken by both sides. From the American lines, a group of captured Nazis marched toward an agreed upon meeting place. Arrangements have been made with the German commander for an exchange of prisoners. And from behind the enemy lines, a similar group of captured Allied troops converges on the rendezvous. Formal negotiations for the exchange are held as the two columns wait impatiently for release to their own forces. The Nazi officers reach an agreement with the Red Cross representative Andrew Hodges and other Allied officials. At the conclusion, what looks like a small riot turns out to be a joyful celebration. Smiling and confident, they are ready to witness the serious business of stemming the Nazi tide. America's new and deadly versions of the rocket firing plane are about to give a Sherman tank the works at the Dover, Delaware Army Airfield. A P-38, armed with the five-inch projectiles, dives for the target. A P-47 makes the run, armed with the same 130-pound missiles aimed by the plane's glide. These attacks are made at 300 miles per hour, the rockets hitting with terrific force. The plane swerves sharply to avoid flying fragments. The tank has really met its match from the air. Captain Harry Drini, assistant commandant of the Maritime Service, has voiced an urgent appeal for thousands of Americans to man our ever-growing merchant convoys to far-flung battlefronts, men from 17 to 50. Training is thorough in the best American seafaring tradition. <laughs> 
Sinews of war must flow in an unceasing stream where and when they are needed. Fuel flies planes, drives tanks, puts war in motion. But it takes men, thousands of them, to keep America on the high seas. Apply at any maritime service office or United States Employment Service. Keep them sailing to victory. Children of diplomats assigned to Washington bring an international greeting to America on this holiday season. These children of the United Nations are what we are fighting for, as we all know. Miss America, for example. Charles Bestemann of Poland. Ada Carrera from our good neighbor Mexico. The representative of the Greeks is on hand, along with this lad from New Zealand. Spain is also here in this pert miss. But our first greeting is from Cuba. And a felicidad para todos. It gives me a great pleasure to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and that the new year, 1945, may bring the world the peace and the happiness to all. And here is a holiday card from Belgium through Lillian and Guy Lauridan. Dear American friends, if the little children of Belgium can celebrate this year for the first time in five years, a free and happy Christmas. It is because many of your fathers have gone over there to chase the Germans out of their country. In the name of the Belgian children, we thank you all for your sacrifice and we wish you a very happy Christmas and joyeux Noël. <laughs>